Chapter 21 My grandfather tells me that my brother might finally understand his place in the way of things. My grandfather tells me the time is yet to come. He is a powerful Yatali. I must believe him. I must remain at my brother's side until the time is right for him to slay the monster. Hey, Corporal! Tilden's voice broke into Nakai's memory of the last time he had seen his grandfather alive. Can you hear me there? I'm sorry, Nakai said, scanning the desert, seeing nothing. Just drifted off there for a second. Been a long day. Yeah, Tilden said. It has at that. They stood in silence for a moment. Nothing moved around them, and no noise came from the centre of town. A warm wind drifted off the desert, bringing nothing but normal smells to Nakai. The creature wasn't out there in this direction, that much was for sure. And guarding this end of town was a waste of time. It was simply a way to keep him out of the kill. Nakai shifted his feet, and the loading dock creaked beneath him. He wondered how secure it was. The abandoned warehouse had been old when he had first come to Agate. He leaned his head against the rough wood and tried to peer deeper into the desert. The silence was eerie. The shadows from the town's lights were right, but the background noise was all wrong. At this time of night, he should have heard more than one car rev its motor as it was heading into town or straight down the desert road. The music from Ben's saloon would have carried this far as well provided it was a weekend and Ben had hired a band, or what passed for a band in Agard. And if there was no music, there would at least be conversation. Loud, drunken conversation, usually about pool, usually spilling out into the roadway. There was nothing. Nothing except Tilden breathing softly beside him. Shouldn't the kid be walking point at least? You know, Tilden said, breaking the silence, he had amazing timing. Nakai was about to tell him to scout a bit. They mentioned at the briefing that this creature had some sort of deadly ray that killed people. Yeah, Nakai said. Instantly, the image of his blue flash cutting through Deetle rose into his mind. He'd have that memory for the rest of his life, and it would come at the most inconvenient moments. Damnation! He wished he could once remember how Deetle had been when he was alive. The weapon fired like blue lightning. I was the one who told them about it. Wonder why the creature didn't use it when we attacked it? Tilden said. Think its ray gun might be broken or something? Nakai froze in place. He had missed that. How had he missed that? Damn, he whispered. The truth of the situation was dawning on him. I wonder why I didn't think of that. What? Tilden asked. You stay on this post, Nakai said. I've got to report to the colonel on this. But... Without waiting for Tilden to finish, Nakai headed off at a run towards the centre of town. It didn't take him very long to get there. The colonel's men had set up a large tent against the back of one building. A guard patrolled the top of the building and two more stood post on corners. Inside the tent, Nakai could see the colonel sitting at a table, studying a map. Nakai slowed to a walk when he reached the sentry positions. Outside the edge of the open tent flap, he stopped and saluted. Colonel, sir. The colonel glanced up, frowning. What is it, corporal? His voice was tired and sounded annoyed. Begging the colonel's pardon for the interruption, but I've got to talk with you, sir. The colonel motioned for Nakai to come in, but he didn't offer him one of the open chairs. Instead, he went back to studying the map. The colonel had really changed his mind about Nakai. Or was he afraid of him? Afraid of a man who had come through the desert on his own, who had survived meeting that creature, not once, but three times. Sir, Nakai said, I believe the creature has a camp. The colonel looked up. A camp? 
Yes, sir, Nakai said. When this creature killed Deedle, it was with a blue bolt of some kind or another, and when I came upon the creature in the desert, it fired on that cat using the same weapon. Yet tonight it didn't fire on us. The colonel studied Nakai. Do you believe you have some special understanding of this creature, Nakai? Yes, sir. The colonel brought his head back as if he were surprised. Nakai held out his hands. He would make or break his own argument here. Now. I've had more time to study it, sir, than anyone else has, and I've been thinking about its patterns. Its arts are like a hunter. A hunter. Nakai nodded. It has travelled here alone, and it hides. It stalks its prey, and it's very careful to take souvenirs. It carries those souvenirs with it. That doesn't mean it's a hunter, Nakai, the colonel said. Tourists carry souvenirs. That's my point, sir. If you were big game hunting in Africa, wouldn't you make sure you kept a scrap of everything you bagged? A tooth, an antler, something, even if you ate the creature. The colonel kicked out a chair and sighed. You certainly make a good argument, Nakai. Have a seat. Nakai sat down. A hunter. Yes, sir. It doubles back. It watches us. It's prey. It uses weapons in very precise ways, and when it's outnumbered, it runs. That seems only logical, the colonel said. And remember, it seems to have some kind of camouflage ability. Nakai cleared his throat, uncomfortable with this next. And when it has time... It dresses its kill like we would dress a deer. The colonel slid the map toward Nakai. So you think it has a camp? Yes, sir. Nakai's heart was pounding. He had convinced the colonel to respect him again. That was critical. Once he had the man's full respect, he would request a return to duty. Real duty. That meant going after the creature. A camp, the colonel mused. Well, why not? If it can fly a craft, it can build a camp. Then his eyes narrowed. But we're making assumptions here. Just because the creature didn't fire on us doesn't mean it wasn't carrying its weapons. True, Nakai said. But there's another detail I missed this morning that I should have seen. The creature left a trail from the site where it killed the big cat towards the north, and then back again. He obviously went into those lava flows and returned for some reason. I didn't give it much thought, since they were older tracks, but if his camp is in those lava rocks, he might have left weapons and supplies there, before he blew up his ship in coal. Setting out from camp without a weapon doesn't make much sense. The colonel said, thinking aloud. He shook his head slowly. But then, from what I've seen of this creature, it doesn't need a weapon most of the time. Yes, sir, Nakai said. Now was his chance. I might just be able to track it back to its camp if you give me a chance. Well, the colonel sat back and thought for a moment. He never finished his sentence. Suddenly, the sound of gunfire echoed over the town, coming clearly from the north side, where Major Lee had gone. Where the creature had gone. Nakai was off his chair instantly, his rifle ready. The colonel stood and moved around to stand beside him, both of them listening. Damn it, the colonel said. I told them not to engage the creature until we had the right men and equipment here. Maybe they didn't have a choice, sir, Nakai said. The creature rarely gave anyone a choice. The colonel nodded. Silence covered the town as everyone waited. Nakai admired the colonel for not sending more men to investigate at once. A lesser leader would have done just that, and possibly sent even more men to their deaths. 
Instead, the colonel stood and waited. Within a minute of the gunshots, Major Lee and Private Corrales came running at full speed around the corner of the destroyed hardware store. The Major ran directly up to the colonel and snapped off a salute. Sir, he said, breathless and sweating, the dirt forming streaks on his sunburned skin. Cheney and Mayhew are dead. Damn it all, the colonel said. He took a deep breath, obviously upset at the news. What happened? The creature must have ambushed Cheney, Major Lee said, then took his gun. It killed Mayhew with Cheney's rifle while making its escape. It seems to be headed directly north. Toward the lava fields and its camp, Nakai said. It would seem that way, the colonel said, glancing at Nakai, then turning back to Major Lee. Suggestions, Major. Sir, Lee said, I think we should bring in everything we can bring in before it reaches those lava fields. If it gets in there, we'll never get it out. The colonel nodded. He turned and moved back into the tent, dropping down into his chair. I agree, he said. I've got an elite commando unit coming in on a chopper, escorted by a gunship. They'll be here within an hour's time. Major Lee nodded and smiled. Good. Nakai also agreed with Lee. Army commando units consisted of 14 of the best trained fighters in the world, and a helicopter gunship had more firepower than almost anything aloft. Against one creature, they might get the job done. But let's not take any chances, the colonel said. Major, I want you to round up all the men around town, leaving two to stay with the dead. Corporal Nakai. Nakai, who had been listening intently, snapped to attention. If the colonel stuck him with guarding bodies, he'd go over the wall. He wasn't pulling guard duty at a time like this, not for any reason. Yes, sir. Think you can track that thing through the desert at night? Yes, sir, Nakai said, smiling. Good, the colonel said. Major Lee, have the Humvees ready to go in five minutes. We're going to drive that creature right into the commandos and kill the damn thing. Nakai could only smile. Finally, the army was doing as he had hoped, working smart and working together. Just maybe, if they were lucky, they'd bag that creature tonight. If they weren't lucky, a lot of men were going to die.